How do you recognize God's purpose for your life? What signposts should we be looking for as we journey with God into fulfilling His dream for our lives? Today on Living Strong, you will discover five additional signposts that will help you navigate into God's plan and purpose for your life. I hope I haven't missed my bus. Oh, hi, I'm Amanda and you are Mr. I'm Jake. Hi, Jake. Um, did you happen to see Psalm 32A? No, I mean bus number 32A? No, dear. I'm so excited. This is my first destination on this journey. Are you from here or are you also going somewhere? Well, I started my journey here and I would love to come back here just to remind myself of where and why it all began. Oh, wow! How nice! Must have been so exciting. Were you also straight out from college? Or tell me more. No, I was way past all that. I was a thriving success and had figured out everything in life, name, fame and wealth. But deep down, I felt empty. I knew something was missing. One day after work, I remember walking to the same place where I met a lady, Auntie Teresa. She said she started her journey here in the same place. After I shared my story with her, she said something very significant. Son, we all like to leave our mark in history. Doing something significant leaves us with a sense of fulfillment. But significance comes from fulfilling God-given purpose for which you were created. But what's the purpose of my life? Ask your creator. Take this. This is for you. Read it and you will discover. Wait for the right season. When it is time, you will know it. That is when I realized I didn't know what my purpose in life was. Oh wow! What happened next? Did you get up and start on your journey? No. You see, it works differently for different people. After reading this book, my perspective changed. I understood that I have a much, much bigger purpose in my life. So I spent more time understanding him, his plans for me. But I knew it was not my time yet. So I waited and waited through different seasons of my life. Seasons of learning, seasons of waiting, seasons of trials, And then, finally, my season to journey arrived. I walked into the amazing plan he had for me. It just felt perfectly right. Was it that simple? Weren't you worried or nervous that you would be doing the wrong thing? What if it was all made up? Yes, there were times when I was confused. Another time, I would go back to the beginning, spend time with my direction manual and wait on the still small voice to tell me when to take the next move in the journey of my life. Did you ever meet Auntie Teresa again? No, never. I came back here so many times hoping to meet her and thank her, but I could never see her again. What if you hadn't met her that day? I guess he knows when to send the right people and when we need them the most. He works in mysterious ways. Anyways, it's time for me to go. It's been a pleasure meeting you. It was really nice meeting you. But please don't go yet. I have so many more unanswered questions. Don't worry. He will direct you step by step, season by season. And after all, you know, he works in mysterious, mysterious ways. ways. Sir, sir, 
Wait, you forgot your book! The first most important signpost or guidepost in, in, in recognizing God's purpose is to recognize the general teaching and instruction of God's word. The second signpost that I find useful is to recognize the seeds in your life. The third important guidepost that I would like to share with us is to recognize the stirring inside of us. The stirring within. The fourth signpost that we want to talk about is to recognize the grace and the gift that God has given you. As we continue our study on fulfilling God's purpose for our life, um, in our study today, we're going to continue learning on how to discover God's plan and God's purpose for our lives. In our, in our uh, session last time, we, we covered four guideposts that help us recognize God's plan and God's purpose. And I just want to review them very quickly. And then we move on to talk about another five of these guideposts that will help us uh, recognize the plan and purpose of God. Uh, the first one that we talked about was the gen recognizing the general teaching and instruction of God's word. We emphasize the fact that God's leading and God's direction in our lives is always in line with the word of God, with the truth that he has revealed. Next, we talked about, secondly, we talked about recognizing the seeds in our life. The seeds that God has sown in our life, which are indicative of his plan and purpose that he has for us. These could be special opportunities, people that God has placed in our life. Uh, it could be dreams that we've received as, uh, as a child or while growing up. Something that really inspired us for the future. The third uh, guidepost that we dis uh, discussed last time was to recognize the stirring in our hearts. Many times there are circumstances, situations that really stir your heart and you want to address it, you feel compelled to address it. That stirring in your heart often is indicative of, what, of the problems that God wants you to address and which direct you into God's plan and purpose for your life. And the fourth guidepost that we discussed the last time was to recognize the grace and the gift of God that God has given you. We said that God has designed each one of us for a very specific purpose. He's put within you, embedded inside you, the grace and the gifting that is needed or required to fulfill that purpose and that dream. So once we discover these gra the grace and the gift within our lives, develop it, allow it to grow, nurture it, uh, uh, um, it will then uh, enable us, give us the required abilities to fulfill God's plan and purpose. Uh, in our session today, we want to just cover the remaining five uh, signposts that are useful for us in discovering and recognizing God's plan, God's purpose. The fifth, uh, fifth uh, important signpost, the way that God leads us and God uh, directs us into his plan, is the inner prompting of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to us time and again, bearing witness in our spirit. He prompts us. Sometimes it comes either as a feeling of peace, saying, go ahead with it, some, with the decision you're about to make. Or it could be a restlessness inside you that says, that makes you really uncomfortable about the feeling, about the choice you're going to make. Very often, this is the Spirit of God speaking to you, telling you yes or no. Other ways that the Holy Spirit would speak is that he would quicken a, a verse of scripture as you're reading. Or sometimes he just brings it back to your memory. He quickens a verse of scripture in relation to the choice you're about to make, in relation to the direction you're considering taking. And that, that word that is quickened by the Spirit of God is a word from God, is a directive from God on what you should do in that situation. The Holy Spirit also inspires dreams in our hearts. He gives us ideas, impressions, pictures, our prophetic words. So as we became, be, become sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we begin to progressively move into God's plan, into God's purpose for our lives. Sometimes the Spirit of God may speak to us about things that are very immediate in nature. 
Sometimes the Spirit of God speaks to us well ahead of time. He could be speaking to us about things five years from now, ten years from now, and reveal those things to us and say, this is what, where God is taking you. This is what God has ordained for your life. And then as you begin to prepare for it, you will find out that the Holy Spirit has actually been preparing you ahead of time for what is uh, God's plan and purpose. A sixth signpost that we could use in our lives is to recognize the circumstances. Many times God speaks to us or he orchestrates situations and circumstances in our lives. And through that he directs our paths. The Bible tells us in Psalm 37 verses 23 and 24, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he's not utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. God orders our steps. He directs the paths in which we go. Now, we must keep in mind that not every circumstance we face necessarily is orchestrated by God. Because some of the circumstances we face could be just the consequence of our own actions, our own choices, something that we've created in our own lives. Uh, sometimes the circumstances that we are confronted with could just be demonic. It could be the enemy setting up obstacles in our lives. So not every closed door means that you shouldn't go through. It could just be the enemy trying to obstruct your path. And so we need to discern that. And sometimes, of course, the circumstances could be the work of other people trying to hinder us or working against us or doing certain things in our lives. So uh, while it is true that God orchestrates circumstances and situations in our lives as he orders our steps, we must be wise to discern the circumstances. Discern, is this from the Lord or is it something else that's being set up against me and, and, and then take uh, appropriate action. The seventh uh, signpost that I find useful in my life in, uh, in, in discovering God's plan and purpose is godly counsel and wisdom. Uh, very often in life, when we are, uh, when we have to make choices and decisions, uh, it, it's it's very useful to go and speak to someone who has a history with God, who has been walking with God over a period of time. People who are mature, who have who have uh, you know experience, who have an experience with God, to share with them the uh, uh, the decision you're about to make, you're considering making, uh, and listen to uh, what they have to say. Godly counsel can direct us. It can keep us from uh, making uh, wrong choices, uh, getting into trouble. We can make, we can learn from their experiences and from their own um, their knowledge of the of the Word of God. Uh, the Book of Proverbs gives us many many uh, 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 scriptures that teach us on the value of receiving counsel. Uh, here are some verses from Proverbs. For example, Proverbs five twenty three says. He shall die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Talking about a man who has no instruction, he's not receiving any input into his life, says he will die because of a lack of instruction. Proverbs 10, uh, verse 17 says, he who keeps instruction is in the way of life. So somebody's receiving input into his life. Uh, he's kept in the, in the way of, of life, but he who refuses correction tends to go astray. Proverbs 11 verse 14, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And several, several of the scriptures in the book of Proverbs that teach us the value of counsel. I want to emphasize uh, the value of godly counsel, meaning counsel from people who have a history with God. They have walked with God. They've been through circumstances, situations. They've gone through time uh, in their walk with God, and they can bear that experience into your circumstance uh, and situation. Now, there is also counsel that can come to us purely based on the written word of God. When you share, some, uh, share something with someone, they can tell you this is what the word of God says, and therefore this is the part that you need to choose. And uh, sometimes counsel can come even based on prophetic inspiration, so that as you share your situation, they can hear from God and speak into your life. So counsel can come based on somebody's experience. They can come based on, on, on the teaching of the word of God. I can also come through prophetic inspiration. This is what the Lord is saying. And then you receive that counsel. And of course, you need to test that counsel that comes through uh, prophetic inspiration. Today's teaching is an excerpt from the free publication called 
fulfilling God's purpose for your life. You can download this free publication for your personal study from our church website www.apcwo.org or request a free printed copy by sending an email to tv at apcwo.org Our website also has several other free resources including mp3 sermons, sermon notes and other free publications that you can download and use. Uh, an eighth signpost that, that I use in my life that helps me understand uh, uh, and uh, recognize what God wants me to do in a give, given situation or even as I am preparing long for long-term goals is to recognize times and seasons. Recognize times and seasons. God works in our lives according to times and seasons. He orchestrates times and seasons in our lives and, and God works by that. Um, God uh, executes things at the right time, in the right season. And the psalmist tells us in Psalm 31 and verse 15, he says, My times are in your hand. My times are in your hand. The times, the seasons of our lives are in the hands of God. And when we understand that the, the, the God we serve is a God who changes times, who changes seasons, and our times, the times and seasons of our life are in his hands, then we become sensitive to the seasons of life that you're walking through. We become sensitive to uh, what we need to do in any given circumstance, in any season of life. A very familiar scripture to all of us is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 which says, To everything there is a season, and there is a time for every purpose under heaven. And God makes, verse 11, Ecclesiastes 3, God makes everything beautiful in its time. In its appointed time, he brings it into its fullness. And so, it's important for us to recognize the time, recognize the season of life that we're in. And if we just carry out what we need to do in that season and prepare for the next season, be sensitive when a particular season of life is getting to a close and you know you're about to transition into another season, then you prepare yourself for the next season. It will help us journey with God season by season in life. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses 5 and 6 says, A wise man's heart discerns time and judgment. A wise person's heart understands time, understands season and judgment, the right thing to do in that season. Because for every matter there is a time and there is a judgment. For every matter there is a right time to do and the right thing to do. So it's important to understand the timing and what you need to do in that season of life. You know, for example, just talking about uh, seasons of life, in the natural, you're going, through you're going through school, you're going through college, that's the season in life where you focus on, on, on learning, developing capabilities, and uh, understanding, and so on. And, and, and during that season of life, we avoid our season, things that we, we might do in a later season of life. For example, if you're in school, that's not the time to be worried about whom you're going to get married to. For most of us. You know, that's the time you focus on your studies. You're not really thinking about, you know, uh, that's not the time to be worried about, you know, your life partner and so on. You graduate from college, you take up a job, you settle, and, 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 and that's, uh, that's probably the appropriate time to get really serious about your marriage and whom you're going to spend life with. And so, in each season of life, you know what you ought to be doing. And similarly, in other areas of life, as we journey with God, uh, uh, if we will order our life according to times and seasons, uh, there will be, it'll help us you know, move with God step by step. There, there are various seasons of life. There, are se there is a season uh, when you serve under somebody else and the season of life when you have your own. That's, there are seasons of life where you are involved in laying a foundation and there are seasons of life when, you're, when you are building the building. When you're laying the foundation, you're doing all kinds of foundational work. You're digging deep, you're going down. But when God brings you to see when you're going to build a building, that's when people see, people recognize. You receive uh, recognition from man. Nobody recognizes you when you're laying a foundation. They think it's a big mess. But really, you're laying the foundation for something that will come. 
And when you come to the season when you're now building up, people recognize. They see what's coming forth and they recognize it. So as we uh, uh, walk with God through various seasons of life, we're able to order our steps according to God's timing and what he wants us to do. The last thing I want to talk about here in recognizing God's season is uh, recognizing God's purpose for our lives is to recognize God's pattern of working. What we find in the Bible is that God sets up certain ways, recurring patterns that he works, in which he works in our lives. And if you become sensitive to the patterns in which God works in your life, it helps you recognize what you're going to, what God is expecting of you to do next. Because he's led you repeatedly through those same patterns. And then you see the God doing the same thing again. You know what to do. You know how to respond. Because you've seen God using that same pattern of working over and over again. God sets up patterns in our lives. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, Paul talks about his own life. And he says, you know, I've been a terrible sinner. But then in verse 16 he says, I have obtained mercy so that God will set a pattern in my life for others to follow. Abraham was a man of faith. God calls him the father of faith. And then God points to him and says, see his life. That's a pattern of how you journey and walk with me by faith. So in people's lives, God has set up patterns. Job is a pattern of endurance. God points to Job and says, look at Job. In, in James chapter 5, verse 10 and 11, he is a pattern of how you must go through uh, with endurance or difficult situations. So God sets up patterns in our lives. And if we recognize how God works in our, in our lives, according to those patterns, it'll, it'll help us follow, it'll help us recognize what we ought to be doing next in life. To, do, so to quickly sum up, we've discovered, we've learned about nine signposts that God uses uh, that I found useful, that God uses to, sh uh, to speak to us, to guide us into his plan, into his purpose. And I'll just quickly uh, review these. The first we talked about was the general teaching and instruction of God's word. That's one signpost that we put in our lives. A second signpost that God uses is the seeds in our lives. The things that he sows into our lives, which are uh, carriers of, it, of purpose and destiny. The third signpost is a stirring in our hearts, a stirring within. What propels you? What moves you? What motivates you? What even agitates you? Those stirrings in your heart. The fourth guidepost that we uh, discussed is to recognize the grace and the gift of God within you. When you uh, recognize the grace that you have, the ability that you carry within you, the giftings that, that God has placed in you, they're indicative of what God has designed you to fulfill in life. Uh, number five, the fifth signpost we talked about was the leading and the direction of the Holy Spirit. The sixth one was the circumstances that God sets up, that God orchestrates. You recognize what God is doing in your circumstances. Number seven was the godly counsel and wisdom that, that, that God uses through people to speak into our lives. The eighth signpost we talked about was times and seasons. And the ninth one was the pattern of God's working in our lives. How God keeps working in our lives, uh, as we recognize that, we could move, uh, uh, move with God. So as we journey in life to discover God's dream, God's plan, God will use any combination of these nine signposts, any combination of them. Sometimes you might have two or three of them uh, giving you an indication of what God wants you to do, and you, you recognize it, and you begin to move in the direction that God is leading. But the point is this, that we must all be convinced that God has a dream, God has a plan, God has a purpose for our lives, and that we are progressively moving into discovering that plan and beginning to live by that plan and fulfill that dream for our lives. And I've, as I've been saying over and over again, there is no greater satisfaction in life than living for God's plan and God's purpose. There is no greater fulfillment than fulfilling God's plan for your life. And there is no greater adventure than living for God's dream for your life. Today's teaching is an excerpt from the free publication called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. You can download this free publication for your personal study from our church website www.apcwo.org or request a free printed copy 
by sending an email to tv at apcwl.org. Our website also has several other free resources including mp3 sermons, sermon notes and other free publications that you can download and use. God leads us through a time of preparation, a process of preparation before he releases us into fulfilling what he has appointed or, or uh, planned for our lives. What does God want to accomplish through the preparation process? I mean, why would God even have a preparation process? What is he seeking to accomplish through that? God wants to see godly character developed in us. God wants to see maturity, us coming to a place of maturity in all areas. How does God prepare us? What tools, if you will, does God use to prepare us and that, that he works away on our lives during this preparation process. We want to be something we are not designed to be. We want to accomplish things we are not graced and gifted for. We want the power of God to flow in a certain way that is not aligned to his purpose. And then we don't see these things happening and we become very frustrated. Thank you once again for watching Living Strong where you are being equipped to live life the Jesus way. We trust that these messages coming your way are enriching your life and we'd really like to hear from you. So do please do send us an email or get on online on our website where you can have access to our free publications and other teaching resources that you can download for free. Also make sure you request for our free publication that we're using in this series to encourage you and uh, expand your understanding on how to recognize God's purpose for your life. Let's just uh, pray together. Would you join me in prayer right now as we close this program? Father, I just thank you for those who are viewing this program right now. We ask for a release of your grace and your anointing on their lives, that they will recognize, Lord, what you're doing in them, how you're leading them step by step into your plan, your purpose. We pray that each one, Lord, will be history makers, that they will fulfill, Lord, your highest, your best, and your greatest in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. See you again, and thank you for watching.